In this video, I want to talk a little bit about nonlinear movement. So right now, if you made a couple platforms, you'll see how right now everything is very straightforward. It's, it's going up and it's stopping instantly. It doesn't really feel like it has any weight. Um, there's a concept called ease in, ease out that we would refer to in animation where we want to have it slow down towards the end or maybe ease into its movement before it's going full speed in the middle and then slowly slow down like that. And that's going to come from your timeline. So if I open up my blueprint, I want to show you what I'm talking about here. If I go into the timeline and I double click, this line is the motion path. So one thing I could do, and you'll see that it goes from here to there and it you know doesn't really have any acceleration or deacceleration. What I want to do is I want it to go really slow at first and then speed up and then slow down as it gets towards the destination. To do that, you can actually add curves to your keyframe. I'm just going to show you a really simple way to do this right now. If you select a keyframe and you right click, um, you can either flatten it or you can, um, easiest way to do it is auto and I'll talk about the others. We'll see how both of these are flattened now. This will give it a slow build up into its max speed and then slow down. I'm going to compile and save and show you what this looks like. You see that easing at the very end? It's a little subtle right now, but it's not a perfect instant stop, which would never happen in real life anyways. So I think that movement actually looks a little bit better to me, but let's say in a scenario where um, you may want something a little different. So let's say I wanna be able to um, pull this upwards. And if you wanted some fancier things, I want to show you, you could do something called breaking the tangent. If you right click and you click break, this will allow you to control handles individually. So if this was a more complex animation, you could actually add a keyframe and then, you know, break the handle over here or over here. It's not going to matter for what we're trying to do. But if I were to have a very different curve, I want to show you what that looks like. Let's just do something kind of wacky and think about what this would do if you visualize it. It's going to go upwards towards its destination, then it's going to go way past it, and then it's going to settle back into its movement. I'll save that and see what that looks like. Hit play. You see it's very different. It's like it's slamming down on the ground, and it's doing crazy things to physics right now. Um, but it starts really quick. It overshoots it, settles, and then comes down. You could start to do some really interesting things with animations doing by manipulating this curve. But here's the downside. You'll notice that it does this to every single platform, even the ones that are moving slow. And I may want this platform to slam down and I may want that platform to move really slow and that one to be linear and that one to be uh, ease in. And we don't really have that much control because again, if you are editing the blueprint, everything shares this. These components and things uh, and these references in the details panel, these are things that you can change and you can have different instances of those things. So the question is, how do we do fancy movement like this? And I'm gonna reset this, I'm gonna click auto. Um, you know what, let's just flatten that. Same over here. And let's say I, I like this movement by default. As long as it's still between zero and one, it won't break any of our code. I like this, but I don't, but, but I may want to have some platforms do a linear or some an overshoot or whatever. So this is how we can start to get some interesting movement in our platforms. But just be aware that right now, everything is sharing the same movement data and um, that has its pros and cons.